Planet Farms. Uh, yeah, I uh, may start like buongiorno tutti, but my Italian is about, that's about my Italian. Of course, I work for an Italian company. Um, I've been in the vertical farming industry for roughly 15 years. Um, started off at Philips Lighting and uh, gradually uh, moved to the other side where I could finally uh, start growing the crops together with my colleagues at Planet Farms. We're an Italian farm, which I will explain a little bit more how we took an industrial approach to go into building one of uh, Europe's largest farms. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about the history, uh, how the company came to, uh, to, came to start from uh, a childhood uh, friendship. A little bit about engineering with a food uh, production mentality and why on earth would you start in Italy, which is probably one of the most critical uh, crowds you can get in the world. Okay, maybe the Dutch are a little bit more critical when, it, when it's concerning horticulture, but at least on the food side of things, I think the Italians do it slightly better. Um, to start, I'll show you our video hero, which shows a little bit also the approach we take, uh, where we believe that you should always have fun in what you do. And I think our video also shows that, and it also shows our, uh, our theme on which we build going forward. Three, two, one. So I'm afraid there was no popcorn in the lunch bags, but uh, the video is not that uh, long anyway. So back on my role within Planet Farms, uh, I uh, basically I deal with everything which is development. So on the one side, it's where should we go after Italy? So our first one's built in Italy, the second one will be built uh, in Italy uh, next year. And then we're expanding where to, that's what I'm investigating. Furthermore, I've been... Uh, I've had the great honor of going with my boots, my muddy boots, through the fields over the past days in rainy Holland to look for new varieties to launch. And basically everything from new variety scouting until when it's in the pack and the technology required is what I, what I look for within the company. That's also why I'm still based in the Netherlands because a lot of the technology as we've seen today still comes from this region. Uh, so it doesn't really matter whether I'm in Italy or whether I'm in the Netherlands. And actually the Netherlands is quite a nice place to scout for technology and new varieties to put into our bags. Planet Farms, uh, two childhood friends, Luca and Daniele. Um, they reconnected after being uh, away from each other for quite a long time. Luca has a background with his family company in building food factories. So his background is drying food in the most optimal way. Well, we just learned from Lisan that microclimate and climate is one of the most critical aspects. He did that for 15 years on an industrial scale with food factories that were fully automated, one to three hectares in size with hardly any people walking there. He met with Daniela, who was on the investment side of things. So Daniela lives in London. He did a lot of investments, also came across quite some investments in the vertical farming space, obviously. And when they reconnected, they said we can do something really useful. Uh, we both have a really good background in, uh, on the one side, the finance uh, kind, of, uh, kind of world, as, as Art said before and Gus said so as well. It's a capital intensive uh, business, so you need to get some funding. And in Europe, it's far more difficult than in the US. Um, and Luca, with his factory mindset, his food mindset, said, OK, if we combine the two, we think we can make something work. Um, Luca started it quite a long time ago, and then when they reconnected, they really started scaling. So it's really technology meets finance, and it's really food technology meets uh, finance. 
Uh, they went from R&D and now we have a factory running in Cavenago di Brianza. It's just outside of uh, Milano, about a 30 minutes drive. You will see it on the highway which, uh, when you go to, uh, to Venice from uh, Milano. So you have that uh, great uh, red wall where you have uh, all the technology around uh, the car industry. And then you have a beautiful building which they are leaning onto uh, as you see it here, which is the factory of, uh, of Planet Farms. Um, like uh, a lot of discussion here as well, there is a lot of support from European uh, governments, from local governments, into new food production systems. We were also lucky to have received a live uh, subsidy. Uh, together with Signify 255 and CIRTI, we were giving a, um, a subsidy to really um, quantify the water savings, quantify the savings on fertilizers because everybody talks about it and we have a big scale facility where we can really track it and really see what the savings are and through this subsidy we can really quantify it, put the measurements in place and really see what the actual uh, values are in, uh, in that sense. And uh, we came from idea to launch uh, at the 200 stores and we didn't start with one retailer around the corner, but we immediately started with four different retailers in Italy who are heavily competitive, but still uh, because they wanted to have the product after they tasted it, they said, okay, we will go for it. And we're now in four retailers uh, and uh, right now we're at roughly 220 stores. Uh, our R&D facility uh, started off, it's a relatively small facility, it's around 300 square meters, divided over different uh, cells, where we did the research to first do the trials for the um, uh, leafy greens that we currently grow. But like Lisanne said, once you translate exactly the same parameter into a big facility, actually your big facility also becomes, at first, in the first round, a sort of validation of research because microclimate is different, but not just microclimate. Irrigation, the way you do your irrigation, the way you do your climate. I mean, one cell going uh, times 10 or times 20 uh, and going from uh, roughly uh, 300 square meters of growing surface into almost a hectare of growing surface is quite a change. Also, we cannot go into the cells. So our cells are fully closed off. Nobody goes into the cell. once. The seed goes in, so basically how the process works is we get an order from uh, a big retailer in Italy. Uh, one of the biggest ones we're supplying to is Esselunga. Esselunga puts into the uh, system an order, the order goes into the ERP, the ERP triggers all the uh, activities inside the factory. Uh, sowing is done automatically, goes into the cell. Throughout the whole process we track exactly where that uh, batch is, it goes out of the cell, it's automatically harvested, automatically packed, automatically put into a box and then driven into a, a logistical sensor, uh, center. And from there it goes into the stores, from harvest to uh, on the people's plates, sometimes it's six hours. So it's really fast and rigid process, which doesn't allow for a lot of people to walk in. So. We have to do a lot with uh, technology, obviously. Um, a lot of these pictures have been shown over the past 10 years, and always people say, ah, it's nice to have a rendering. Uh, you never have the actual thing built. So that's why I decided to take a picture of myself in front of the facility that is not just a rendering, but it is the actual facility. So once you drive through Italy, and I encourage you to go, go there uh, quite often, I do that once a week every month. It's not so bad coming from this weather. Great day for multi-layer growing indoors, by the way, but um, it's really nice to be in Italy and to experience the food culture uh, that they have over there and to see our facility because you can see it from the highway. Um, the, some of the ranges of the crops we, uh, we currently have in stores. Uh, so we started with uh, leafy greens. We do some research into other crops, but we said at first we want to do leafy greens and everything is baby leaf. So we have uh, three mixes, uh, a mix with a little bit more uh, Japanese orientals like bok choy, touch soy. We have a spicy mix which has more mustard, rucola, mizuna, and then some traditional uh, lettuce mixes and a single variety lettuce. Um, we're launching rucola in a few weeks uh, as a single variety as well. And then in the coming years, next to improving the ranges we currently have on nutrition because we know how to grow them we know how to create the best taste. 
Next step is to improve them on nutrition using specific light recipes. So all our cells are completely color controllable, temperature is controllable, everything is controllable. So we can really start to tweak, use pre-harvest treatments to optimize vitamins, nutrients, but always with the taste in, uh, in mind. Now, if you look at the process, uh, we don't just uh, take an empty distribution hall and put some racks inside. We start Greenfield. Why Greenfield? Because that way we can really optimize and take the factory approach that Luca has always learned ever since he was young. So you can really optimize processes, integrate processes when you do Greenfield because you're not hampered by a construction site that's already there or by a structure which is already there. We do large scale. First one was one hectare, second one will probably be two hectares. So um, if you see also uh, earlier this morning, they talked about the perception of people and perception of retail. Up until today, especially in Europe, most of the farms were relatively small. If you have a small farm, you cannot supply the whole retail chain. So one time you take it from this vertical farm, then you take it from this vertical farm. And yes, vertical farms have the potential to deliver a superior product, but you have to make sure you do it right. And a lot of them didn't do it right from the start. What we try to do is take a factory approach. So it's not always such a nice story like a social initiative where everybody gets reintegrated, those kind of things. We run factories. In the end, we want to improve um, the flavor of produce without starving its resources. And that is, in the end, what we try to do. And by building large-scale farms, we can be more competitive. We do them fully automated, so end-to-end -end automation, to make sure that the labor side of things, where it's very difficult not just to get people to do labor work, but also to get growers. Um, so once you do large scale and fully automated, it's easier to scale and to scale a little bit faster. We work in clean environments, so everything is uh, clean room standard. Everything that comes in is scanned. We have our own uh, lab to do all the analysis on pathogens, but also on uh, microbial count, on uh, nutritional values, dry matter, everything is in-house. Uh, Data-driven approach, obviously, when you cannot go into your cells, you need to have a lot of eyes that go into the cells, and you need to have a lot of sensors that go into the cells. That's also why we are lucky that we have an open architecture, so we use the best parties for the different uh, parts that we need, but we have our own software integration. That's why I asked the question, Lisanne. So um, we have a software team in Portugal that is already also in the indoor farming industry for 10 years writing the software. We've integrated that into uh, our proprietary uh, software, which basically links everything together. From the order intake until the packaging at the end, everything is shown in our own dashboards, in our own uh, system. Um, quite a unique selling uh, proposition. So we said we, we want to lead, don't follow, but we want to show, don't tell. Why haven't you heard us screaming that we're the biggest vertical farm in Europe, those kind of things? We wanted to be in stores. We wanted to prove that we could be, become profitable. So based on what we see now, we will become profitable on that uh, facility. We take an industrial approach, greenfield facilities, end-to-end -end automation, clean room environment, but more than anything else, it's about quality and flavor. That's the good thing. So when I first came, uh, you saw the, the basil pictures of uh, Lisanne to Luca, that's not basil. This is not basil, Lisanne, eh? come on. <laughs> so it's basil in Italy, it's, it's not a crop, eh? it's a way of life. So when I came with a lot of background and a lot of knowledge about basil, uh, Luca came to me and he said, ah, look, well, you know nothing about basil, this is basil. And, and that's also another complex thing about vertical farms. Where are they? Are they in Italy? Requirements are completely different than when they are in the Netherlands. If you walk around all the fairs, green tech, if you t go to seed meets technology, what are they focused on? Highest yield at the lowest cost. It's a mentality thing. In our case, it, yield doesn't really matter. Of course, it's important that we need to improve it. Flavor first. And one of the good things we have is that we have an ambassador in the name of Kiko Cerea, which is a three-star Michelin chef. He runs Da Vittorio restaurant, and we will open a facility later this year at Da Vittorio. And he is our brand ambassador, and he is our taste ambassador. So when we launch a new line of products, 
We take it to Kiko, and Kiko says, okay, this product is good enough, the flavor is perfect, now reproduce this all the time. Gaia, uh, the Earth, uh, Planet Farms, that's how we named our uh, vertical farming system. So here everything gets integrated. Uh, this is the software where everything uh, runs on. And uh, what we do is we have uh, shuttles going into the cells to deliver the, uh, the trays. And on those shuttles, we have a lot of uh, cameras. And inside, we have a lot of sensors as well that measure it and bring everything together in that central system, where then the growers can, uh, can find uh, uh, whether the crop is growing well or not. Is it complex? Hell yeah, it's very complex. If you don't have eyes in the cell all the time, you really need to learn how to work with technology. But at such a scale, luckily, we can. And then why Italy? Uh, energy costs are high, super high. Um, around 15 cents more than what you would have in the Netherlands. So you have to be energy efficient from day one. Consumers are super demanding, so you cannot compromise on flavor. Um, we have a lot of uh, product availability yeah? everywhere you have the nice fields. Most of the rucola here comes from Italy, so why would we use uh, rucola as a product as well? Because we think we can differentiate, and it forces us to differentiate, so we have to be different. Um, high labor cost, automation. Uh, and there are a lot of small medium enterprises that can help in the whole optimization. So the automation was done with a local uh, party that did a lot of automation of high-end warehouses. We've worked together with seeding uh, and uh, harvesting uh, robots that were built in Italy. And here we are. So we are in stores, we're on Amazon in uh, Italy. Uh, on all the Instagram uh, timelines of uh, high-end chefs, and we're in stores. And we're, like I said, not just in one store, but we're in an awful lot of stores. So it's really nice when you're in the Milan area, but also we're already in Rome, we're already in Venice. Uh, so it's spreading quite fast, and with the second facility next year, it will spread even further. Um, so yeah, if you look for us, find for a paper pack. So our pack is made of paper with a thin, very thin film of recycled uh, plastic, because obviously paper and uh, moist leaves don't really go together that well. But it's such a limited amount of plastic that in Italy you can put it into the old paper uh, waste. So they can use it in the uh, paper waste. So we're in many stores, like you see. And hopefully, uh, this is what we see most of the time when we go into a store, um, but not too long, maybe for a few minutes. Thank you.